Hello and welcome to Building Context. This is a series of videos that we're doing on APIs and API security. My name is Chris Westfall. I head up product marketing here at Salt Security. And again, today I'm joined by Michael Spitsky. He's our technical evangelist. Um, Michael, welcome to, the, welcome to the episode. Thanks, Chris. Always good to be here. It's great to have you back. We're continuing our discussion on API attacks. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about credential stuffing, which, uh, you know, it's probably one of the more common, actually, all these are, are, are fairly common, but um, this is, you know, this is kind of the gate, the credentials or, or authentication is really at the, at the gate of a lot of these applications. Um, a lot of these apps are, are more and more applications are, are um, authenticated, right? And, and you need credentials to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we can start off by talking about credential stuffing. And just to put a little frame around this, I know, you know, like a lot of these um, attack types that we're talking about, the definition can be quite broad. So maybe we can talk about what credential stuffing is and what, yeah. what it isn't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a really good question, Chris. And I'd say we see it quite a bit. I mean, in, certainly in security circles uh, where the terms get overloaded. Uh, but, you know, even sometimes with our customers, when they're, they start seeing these attacks, uh, it, it can be newer. Um, you know, in, in the world of security, you know, most of us are familiar with brute force attacks. Um, and, and we've seen many cases where it, these types of events, credential stuffing get described purely as brute forcing. Um, they are distinctly different, right? Because, you know, with brute forcing, typically the attacker has little information to go on uh, about uh, a user credential. Right. Well, maybe I know the user ID, but I don't know the password. I might not know either. Right. So I'm going to start attempting sequences of characters to attempt to guess a working user ID or password. And I have to do that over you know, many requests. Uh, I need to throttle that because I'm either going to bump into a rate limit or I'm going to hit an account lockout. So it can be slow and painful you know, unless you have direct system access, but typically through APIs, it's it's a little bit harder to do, right? Which is why we've seen rate limits pushed so heavily as kind of the defensive mechanism for these types of attacks. Uh, the, the reality is most organizations, what are they're being faced with now uh, is credential stuffing attacks. Uh, and it, it often gets uh, intertwined with account takeover or ATO. We'll see those get used interchangeably. Um, ATO is kind of the end goal, kind of almost like what we were talking about when we talked about data exfiltration, like yeah. I want to take over an account. So that's that's my goal as an attacker. I might have a few ways I might go about that. It could be brute forcing, uh, but I might even try credential stuffing. And with credential stuffing, it's, uh, it's a little bit newer because we live in a world uh, now where there's been so many breaches where, you know, organizations have lost... Uh, either access to their entire user data stores, right? All of that information was pilfered yeah. uh, or it was stolen slowly over time, you know, just pulling out, working things through brute forcing and then attacker assembles it. But these data sets end up on, you know, the dark web usually and uh, they get compiled. We actually, we hear about this quite frequently. It's, it's almost like quarterly where somebody's compiled yet another data set. Uh, yeah. The most frequent one I know of is the, uh, uh, compilation of many breaches, comb, which is over 3 billion credentials, which is insane, right? Like that's, that's yeah. so many uh, credentials. And, it, you know, we know users reuse uh, passwords and user IDs, right? It's want to keep things simple. We, yeah. we all lead busy lives. You need to be able to remember your login. So we keep things uh, the same across sites. That's kind of the reality, right? So these stolen credentials can work. Um, and attackers basically just use those data sets against organizations and their, you know, authenticated services uh, attempting to find a working credential. And then once I do that, you know, well, now I have authenticated context. So I've taken over the account, right? That's the point of ATO. And now I'm probably going to pivot, right? Can I get to more data? Can I start abusing functionality? All those things. Yeah. And uh, like you said, there's never there's no shortage of, of fresh credentials out there. I mean, we just saw LinkedIn had an incident recently. Um, we're still trying to sort out, but it looks like there's a whole bunch of fresh 
uh, consumer data out there, right? Yeah. That can be used in these kinds of attacks coupled with, yeah. um, you know, you talked about comb that couple couples, a lot of different breaches over time. I mean, there's a, uh, and, and just, you know, bad user practices in general make this a huge risk for, um, for companies yeah. and for consumers. Yeah. It's, it's a good point, Chris. Yeah. Cause it's like, you, you might have a part, a piece of the data, right? Like in the LinkedIn case, you, you, you probably have somebody's email address at that point, right? You know, that belongs to this uh, individual. Yeah. That's one half of the equation, right? So now you might use that. Uh, it's partially credential stuffing, but it's, it's uh, mixed with brute forcing, right? Cause I have the user login. Now I need to yeah. start attempting passwords. So I'm probably going to, guess alphanumeric sequences and try to brute force the password but yeah it's it's a problem right because it's in that linkedin case it's not just the privacy impacts which is huge uh, right. but also these this data could be used for malicious intent like trying to take over somebody's account yeah well and like you said a lot of this uh well all these types of attacks are things that attackers are automating um they're doing so you know low and slow to keep under the um the rate limit the rate yeah. limits so they don't get caught they don't get blocked they don't you know lock out a, a user account um how do we go about preventing this i mean how, how do um how can we get better at this i know from a user standpoint you know the best practice is not to use the same credentials, especially the same password across multiple um, yeah. in, in multiple services, because an attacker now with these huge data sets, uh, they may have a you know a bunch of different credentials for you as an individual and a bunch of different known passwords so uh, that they can try it across all these different services. But yeah. as a as an organization, as defenders, what can be done to, to help prevent these types of attacks? Yeah. Um... You know, there's nothing that's silver bullet, right? And we hear that a lot in security. Um, you know, and passwords are interesting because they're, it has evolved, right? We've seen NIST uh, kind of change their recommendations over time. Um, you know, uh, 2FA, you know, second factors of authentication, like a smartphone challenge, um, that, that was kind of a go-to. It still is, uh, can be a good mitigating uh, mechanism, right? So now I might have the username and password, but now I need uh, the authentication token, that second factor of auth, and that's going to change, right? You you can't, well, hopefully you can't guess that. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, it increases the strength of your um, authentication mechanism. Uh, the problem is, as we sometimes see with 2FA, is it, it might be implemented improperly where now I can brute force the 2FA mechanism, right? That yeah. That's an issue. Uh, maybe you're not using long enough number sequences. So now you don't have enough randomness, right? And like we've been talking about automations in the name of the game, right? And these APIs are available uh, because that, that's just the business design. So yeah. rate limits can't always detect, you know, if somebody is trying to brute force a 2FA challenge, are, are you going to detect that? Some organizations don't, right? Uh, we have, I think we saw that a couple of months ago. Somebody uh, found a way to uh, brute force Microsoft's uh, 2FA mechanism in yeah. Office 365 because it was just doing it uh, intermittently, right? So it's, it's potentially an infrastructure problem there, but it's interesting, right? That's why I said like it will help raise the bar, but it's it's not going to be uh, foolproof. Uh, you can go with longer you know, password complexity, but usually that's diminishing returns because we know, yeah. you know users don't like complex passwords. They're going to start to write them down or use password storage mechanisms. Uh, passphrases were kind of recommended for a while, like maybe a sentence, like that's easier to remember. And it actually yeah. adds quite a, quite a bit of complexity to uh, combat automation where they're trying to brute force these things. Uh, that, that can also kind of help raise the bar. Um, you know, th those help a little bit as like mitigative uh, for, for somebody that's designing the access control and user and password policies, but uh, you know, and things like password history and account lockout thresholds, they're, they're all kind of helpful. Uh, you know, the problem though, is like, if you get too aggressive with them, uh, those controls, you start to impact user experience. Uh, yeah. And we see this a lot with captures, you know, like where, 
it, it's just damaging to the user experience, right? You know, if, you, if you've hit a page <laughs> two times as a human and then suddenly you're getting cha challenged with the captions, it's like, did I look like a machine? Like, that's crazy. You but know, like you know, uh, identifying crosswalks. The... <laughs> yeah, and, and the trees through the forest, right? And then you're squinting exactly. and it's like, I don't, it, but is this a picture of the thing? Like, I don't know. And then you fail that and now you got to do another caption. And, right. You know, it's, it's interesting because those are usually put in place on you know like ticket sales we've talked about that in another uh episode right like some high demand item <laughs> you just bumped into the captcha by the time you solved it you you just missed out on the item right so yeah. these these are the Super types of scenarios where captchas like they're just kind of universally hated yeah. uh we see other approaches too where they push things client side um though it's diminishing returns right because we know in the world of APIs, there's kind of this large ecosystem of integrations. You could break those, right? Or uh, you just can't support direct API communication, right? There isn't necessarily a front-end consumer uh, at, at that kind of um, piece of the API sequence, right? Those aren't your API callers. So challenging somebody client side just might not even fit into the scenario. Uh, but attackers are also thrifty, right? And resourceful. They'll find ways around captures. They use caption solving services themselves. They reverse, reverse engineer any client side code you will put in. You know, so ultimately organizations that are in this world and concerned about account takeover, which is everybody, right? Like in most cases, you you need authentication in place to protect your data and your users. Uh, so, you know, everybody's kind of at risk of credential stuffing and account takeover. We see this as a big trend. Um, you, you have to start looking at what are the behaviors of my API callers? What does a normal login sequence look like? Uh, you know, are they requesting logins from different locations? Are they uh, attempting too many hits against the login API using different credentials? All of those things start to become apparent, you know, when you start looking at it from kind of what, what's the context, what, what's yeah. all the traffic, how, how are people hitting my API, and then being able to correlate it, right? So you, you need machine assistance for that. It's way too many login events. We're not not in the days of examining Windows Server logs anymore, right? Like the if you were to look at the log stream, it would be insane. So we yeah. need machines to kind of analyze what's going on. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and another, another another big data problem uh, that can be hopefully solved or addressed you know, using, using machines. Well, Michael, thanks for that overview on um, on credential stuffing. You know, the differentiation between cracking and stuffing, the brute force, and and, and some of the not so brute force. Yep. Um, I think it's you know hopefully give some people some things to think about. And I appreciate you being on the program yet again. We look for having you on another episode so we can continue the conversation around API attacks and, and other topics around APIs and API security. Awesome. Uh, thanks for joining Stay us. Chris. All right. Take care.